Good evening, everyone. Um, I'd like to thank the organizers for um, uh, putting this event together and for uh, inviting me. This is a special honor to be with uh, uh, Professor Mendez, again, who is uh, uh, an, an inspiration. I'd also like to thank each of you for coming out because <clears throat> it is, um, it, it's, it's just very actually inspiring to see so many of us here. Um, it is easy to think that we are not only alone, but that we are doomed to failure, but we're not. Um, I come from an organization that I think many of you are familiar with, um, and my response to uh, Dr. Mendez's comments are going to be about the kind of work that Amnesty International does, um, which is basically education, awareness raising, campaigning, and political impact. Um, because the imposition or the, 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 the violation of torture, um, while not limited to government authorities, sadly is happening too often because of government authorities. And not just any government, but our own government. Um, we are in a period where the global paradigm shaped out of Washington, um, and that is being delivered to the American people, is that torture is fine as long as it keeps us safe. And if it's done against the right people, then it's even better. And if it has impact, then of course it works. And how can we argue with that? Um, the same messaging is being delivered to other governments. And I think, as was said earlier, my focus is primarily on Sub-Saharan Africa, where um, the approach to um, extracting what is called necessary information in the war on terror actually is encouraged by Washington and rewarded um, from its political allies. Um, we are going to be seeing President Obama go to Africa tomorrow, starting tomorrow morning. He's going to be going for three days to, um, uh, and the focus of the trip is to talk about promoting trade and investment, which is fine and good. Africa certainly needs that. But there's not going to be any discussions about justice and about accountability and about the government's obligations not to engage in torture. So we have a lot of work to do. Um, and uh, we, it seems to me that we have to not only work together and to unite, but we also, I think, have to come up with some new ideas and some new tactics because the, we, we can't rely, we, we don't seem to have, to have the necessary tools or the, certainly we don't have the resources to, to, to counteract this message that torture is fine because it's being done for the right reasons and of course for the right control and by the right people. Um, we, 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 we have to remind people about the moral incorrectness, the legal incorrectness of torture, and the inhumanity of torture, and to make it as unacceptable and as abhorrent as it should be. And that's what this room represents to me, that there are people who are still engaged in this struggle to, to, to counteract this message, to work with survivors, as was said, not for survivors, or, um, and also to, to um, push what is supposed to be a friendly administration to change policies and to be the leader that it was meant to be, or that we hoped it would be when it came into power in 2008. Mm -hmm. Our work um, around torture, of course, with uh, a lot of people here and a lot of organizations, focuses on um, closing Guantanamo, which is the, it, it, it is not the only core focal point, unfortunately, of bad behavior, but it, it is certainly the, the central point and the one that's most visible, and the one that undermines everything because not only is the U.S. keeping people in detention there, it is um, also a, a, a violation of the U.S.'s obligations uh, under international treaties, and it's the one that has been, and we've been unable to have an acceptable resolution to, even with the president that has recommitted himself over and over again to doing it. Um, 
And in addition to Guantanamo, obviously, we have the work on um, trying to stop the um, practices and policies in the uh, National Defense Authorization Act, and it's really, um, uh, that, that are always laden with the worst kinds of provisions that allow questionable behavior. Um, we have our work on the, the, plan, the, the programs of renditions and the this assistance going to foreign governments that do the work that the United States doesn't want to be directly linked to. Um, but in addition to Guantanamo, we are also working on, um, as Amnesty has done since it started in the 1960s, individualizing torture, making the American public that is either unaware or indifferent to the consequences the costs and consequences of torture and making it real. Um, one of the cases, Shaka Amar, is, is a, a, an individual case that many of you have worked on. And we had, just last week, um, I think a major step forward in that we had the British Prime Minister ask President Obama at the G8 meeting, what is going on? Why is this man still in jail? Um, it may not seem like much because Mr. Amar is still in jail, but at least wherever the president goes, he should be forced to answer questions and give <laughs> We are, um, we are going to, I think, um, have to be good ourselves because uh, I, I, I remember listening to a quote of um, the president of the NAACP, Ben Jealous, when uh, President Obama was first elected, and they were talking about what their relationship would be, and Mr. Jealous said that he was going to be his Frederick Douglass to his Abraham Lincoln. And I thought that was actually a very interesting and appropriate analogy. We must make this president listen to his better angels and do the right thing. Um, and that, I think, is what our gathering here together really should be leading us towards. Um, it is not only to recognize and heal and unify, but also to recommit ourselves to making the U.S. government change policy. And that means that we need to make the American people demand a change in policy, because our leaders will only answer to their constituents. Um, as, we, as we come together um, over the next couple of, uh, certainly, Unfortunately, it may take more than this president's term in office. Um, we have got to remember that there are no exceptions. The prohibition on torture is, is, is firm, it's clear, it's there for a reason. Um, that investigations and accountability and redress, those have been mentioned, as well as safeguards, all of those things need to be consistently raised with our members of Congress as well as with our executive branch members. Um, and finally, we must also remember to be with each other in, hum in a humane and human, human, humanizing way. Um, the, there, one of the, um, the interesting cases that I have just been learning about, um, which Dr. Mendez mentioned, was the issue of solitary confinement. I don't know how many of you know about the case of the Angola Three, who are um, in Louisiana and have been incarcerated despite having convictions overturned by local courts um, several times have been in jail for close to 30 years. Um, one of them, Robert King, was released about 15 years ago and has been trying desperately to try and get his two colleagues out for a crime that they did not commit. Despite the overturning of their convictions by the lower courts, the Louisiana Attorney General has, is on record as saying that these men will not be released by what he is, Attorney General. Um, we've just unfortunately got some very sad news that one of them has just been diagnosed with lung cancer and has a prognosis of anywhere from two months to a year. And that even if um, compassionate release um, was expedited by the governor, Governor Jindal, um, the, the Louisiana system is not going to move fast enough. I, I, I can't... I, I, I find this outrageous, and I think that whether Albert has two months or two years, his case and Herman's case and Robert's case have to be fought for and won because the principle is right 
and it must not happen for anybody else ever again. We can't have solitary confinement the way it's being done in the United States, as Dr. Mendez mentioned. Um, among the, some of the things that are being done to them, of course, they're being kept in uh, rooms that are 6 by 12. Um, they are search, strict search every time they leave the room, even to go to the bathroom, despite not having anything in the room except the bed. The, the, there's nothing else to be here except torture, the way these men are being treated. And we can't have that in this country. And I, I, I certainly call on all of you to, to sort of regird yourselves, to let us work together, and to let us end torture, um, and let us change the policies of the Obama administration together.